Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, with permission, I should like to make a statement. All organisations need a governance and regulatory structure that is fit for purpose. The BBC's is not. The public has a right to know what the highest earners the BBC employs are paid out of their licence fee. <laughs> Mr Speaker, the current licence fee system needs to be fairer, so we will close the iPlayer loophole. You made a mistake threatening me. We want the BBC to be the leading broadcaster in addressing issues of diversity. Find our man. Sorry, mate, who are you again? I commend this statement to the House. Yeah. Mr Speaker, all organisations need a governance and regulatory structure that is fit for purpose. The BBC's is not, and it is no longer supportable for the BBC to regulate itself. Governance failures, including excessive severance payments and the costly digital media initiative, have illustrated that the division of responsibilities between the BBC, BBC Executive and the BBC Trust is confusing and ineffective. As the independent review led by Sir David Clementi made clear, there is widespread agreement that reform is vital. I can announce today that we are accepting the review's recommendations. So the new charter will create a unitary board for the BBC that has a much clearer separation of governance and regulation. The board will be responsible for ensuring that the BBC's strategy, activity and output are in the public interest and accord to the mission and purposes set out in the Charter. Editorial decisions will remain the responsibility of the Director General and his editorial independence will be explicitly enshrined in the Charter while the unitary board will consider any issues or complaints that arise post-transmission. And for the first time, the BBC will have the ability to appoint a majority of its board independently of government. This is a major change, as previously the BBC governors and then the members of the BBC Trust were all appointed by government. Yeah, 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 Mr yeah, Speaker, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ofcom has a proven track record as a regulator of media and telecoms. It is the right body to take on external regulation of the BBC. We will require Ofcom to establish new operating licences for the BBC with powers to ensure its findings are acted upon. Ofcom will also take charge of regulating the distribution framework and fair trading arrangements for the BBC. It will be a strong regulator to match a strong BBC. The Government will introduce four further changes to them that make the BBC more accountable to those it serves. The Charter review process will be separated from the political cycle by establishing an 11-year Charter to 2027 with an opportunity to check the reforms are working as we intend at the mid-term. This will be the third longest charter in the BBC's history and allows for an orderly transition to the new arrangements. The BBC already publishes the data on the salaries of its staff by broad bands and the names and detailed remuneration packages of management earning more than £150,000. The public has a right to know what the highest earners the BBC employs are paid out of their licence fee. The new charter will therefore require the BBC to go further regarding the transparency of what it pays its talent and publish the names of all its employees and freelancers above £450,000, which is the current General, Director General's salary, in broad bands. The Government also expects the new BBC Board to consider other ways in which it can improve transparency But with a 33% share in television, 53% share in radio, and the third most popular UK website, and with only 27% of people believing that the BBC makes lots of programmes that are more daring and innovative than other broadcasters, commissioning editors should ask consistently of new programming, is this idea sufficiently innovative and high quality, rather than simply, how will it do in the ratings? So we will place a requirement to provide distinctive content and services at the heart of the BBC's overall core mission of informing, educating, educating and in entertaining in the public interest. And we will also affirm the need for impartiality in its news and current affairs broadcasts. Amid the glamour and the glitz of the BAFTAs, there was a bubbling political undercurrent. 
Wolf Hall director Peter Kosminski had this message for Culture and Media Secretary John Bittingdale and his plans to scale back the BBC. Most people would agree that the BBC's main job is to speak truth to power, to report to the British public without fear or favour, no matter how unpalatable that might be to those in government. It's a public broadcaster independent of government. It's your BBC. And we should stand up and fight for it, not let it go by default. And if we don't, if we don't, blink and it will be gone. No, no. His passionate speech brought a standing ovation. And there was support from actor James Nesbitt. I think it's true that all these films, their writers, their directors, their cast and crew, and let's face it, everyone in this hall is able to do what they do as well as they do because of the BBC. There was a first ever BAFTA for Strictly Come Dancing. And Peter Kay picked one up for his hugely popular comedy, Car Share. Saran Jones was named leading actress for her performance in the infidelity drama, Dr. Foster. Leading actor went to Oscar winner Mark Rylance for his portrayal of Thomas Cromwell in Wolf Hall. I've come, I feel kind of speechless because I've come thinking I'll make up something to say during the evening. And then I've been so distracted by all the wonderful television uh, on the screen here that I haven't really been able to think of something proper to say. There was an outstanding contribution award for Sir Lenny Henry. And the Sky Sports team behind the Ashes coverage was also honoured. But this was a night that will be remembered for a political battle that's yet to be fought. Enda Brady, Sky News at the BAFTAs.